Danielle Marie Hill. You are my best friend, Danny. Today marks 634 days since I made a promise that I so willingly will keep for the rest of my life. It was a promise I made that so unknowingly led us to this point in our lives, standing here with you. It's a promise I made to your parents. I sat on the edge of my bed at 11.30 at night after having played your dad in eight ball on Facebook <laughs> only hours before. All night I was hesitating as I was finding the nerves to call him to ask his blessing for me to ask you to be my girlfriend. I don't, I don't know why I did that, I don't know who does that. <laughs> who asked the girl's dad for permission to date their daughter over Facebook when they haven't met and their only prior form of communication was playing endless eight ball? <laughs> when I did find the courage and your dad did pick up, immediately I heard the TV shut off and your mom race over because he does, never picks up not on speakerphone. <laughs> that night, what I promised your parents has popped into my head every day since as the Lord has continued to bless us. What I promised them is that I would care for you, love you, and consistently treat you like their princess. To treat you like their princess is to treat you as a daughter of Christ. And to treat you as a daughter of Christ, it has encouraged me to be a son of Christ. This promise has taught me the significance and meaning of love in a Christ-centered relationship. A love not based on feelings, intentions, or public imagery, but a love based on a grace-filled covenant our God has made with us. Danielle, as your husband, I promise to protect you. Not just your well-being, but I will protect your heart, your mind, and your love for Jesus. I promise to love you unconditionally. I promise to make you laugh, whether I have a story I've been dying to share, I'm purposely embarrassing you, or I'm just being a complete menace to your society. <laughs> <laughs> I promise to bring you joy. I promise to look at you every day of my life through the eyes of Christ. I promise to try my best to not kick off the bed sheets at night when I can't sleep still, but fair warning, it's going to be inevitable. <laughs> I promise to make you coffee in the morning. I promise to make you coffee in the afternoons. <laughs> I promise to make you coffee in the evenings and coffee at midnight because we never sleep and we never don't have coffee in our hands, except this moment. I promise I will not go to bed until every little disagreement has been resolved, for a heart willing to go to bed angry is a heart willing to lose. I promise to guide you, to guide you to the Lord in search of wisdom, in times of sadness, in need of comfort, in celebration, and in times of thanks. Together, I promise to pursue Jesus, and I promise to put Jesus, and only Jesus, before you, so that through Jesus, we can live in a marriage glorifying and edifying to Him. Together, Danielle, we are choosing this journey to chase Jesus in everything we do, every day of our adventurous lives. Micah, did I ever tell you about my husband handbook? Um, I wrote it on November 9th, 2019, so almost two years ago today. We were encouraged to do it during one of our hall leadership meetings, just as a way for us to think about what we were looking for in our future spouse. As someone who had never even had a boyfriend before and truthfully thought marriage might not ever be part of God's plan for her, I obviously went back to my dorm and filled it out right away. Uh, as I thought about what I was looking for in a husband, I organized my handbook into three categories essential characteristics, non-essential characteristics, and absolute no-goes. <laughs> After I finished my list, I tucked it away into the notes app on my phone, not sure if or when I would ever use it again. Fast forward to just a few months later, January 21st, 2020, we go on our first date. Just like you, I was a little nervous that trying to date would ruin our friendship. But would you look at that, it obviously went very well. <laughs> As we continued dating and later became boyfriend and girlfriend, I could see that God was doing something special in our relationship. I decided it was time to bring my husband handbook out of retirement. As I went through my list, I realized that you were checking off a bunch of my boxes. Let me highlight some of my favorites from each category. For the non-essentials, you reciprocate my love for the office. You like to cook and enjoy a good plate of food. You don't force me to watch sports. You appreciate, <laughs> you appreciate game nights. And to top it all off, you're very handsome. <laughs> For the essentials, you're the funniest person I know. You love your family with your whole heart. You love my family with your whole heart. You're a hard worker. You're my best friend. And most importantly, you love Jesus more than you love me. Micah? Although I only mentioned a few of my favorites, I want you to know that you check off every single requirement in my husband handbook. 
I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Between the essential and non-essential list, I have 44 requirements, and you meet <laughs> <laughs> and you meet them all. <laughs> not only that, but you're so much more than I could have ever prayed for. Because of that, I promise to love you even when you're being a menace to my society. <laughs> I promise to support you in all of your adventures and ideas. I promise to respect you even when I don't understand you. And lastly, I promise to help you raise a household that loves Jesus with their whole hearts and value showing God's love to all others above all else. <laughs>